So how do you present patients on rounds? That's what we're gonna learn on today. Let's say you got that patient, you're a medical student, you're a surgical resident, you're going up to round, how are you gonna present that patient to the team, all right? What format do you use? Do you just wing it, or do you have something you go through? Have you ever heard of soap, all right? Well, if you haven't, you're gonna learn all about it. All right, let's do it. Welcome back to Citizen Surgeon. My name is Dr. Eric Pearson. I'm a pediatric surgeon. I'm here to scale surgical education, get you comfortable on the ward, in the ICU, in the operating room, and across your exams. Today is gonna to be one of those getting comfortable on the wards talk, all right? We're gonna go through how to present an inpatient or a patient on rounds, okay? So in the previous talk, I went through how to present a new consult to the team or a new consult to your chief resident or your attending, all right? I went through the style, I went through the structure, and today we're gonna to be going to those daily rounds. Okay, so how do you present that daily inpatient? In another talk, I'm gonna go through how to present an ICU patient. So that's gonna be a little bit different, and that is a very, very structured report so you don't get lost in that mountain of data. Today, we're gonna to be talking about that patient on the ward, okay? How to present that patient. So, we talked about style in the last one, and I'm not gonna go over it again. Confidence, notes, time, of course, honesty, these are all components of that style category. I talked about the last one, so if you want to check out that talk, definitely go do that. I'll put the link in the description below where I already probably popped it up above there. Okay, but let's get into structure. So in the intro, I mentioned SOAP. So we got SOAP notes, we got SOAP presentations, all right? So SOAP stands for Subjective, Objective, Assessment, and Plan. It's in that order for a reason. So that you begin with subjective, you go all the way through plan, you got that flow, and you don't go backwards. All right, I always joke with the residents, like even when we're rounding, I always wanna go forward. If we're gonna start out at room 4001 and we gotta to go to 424 to see patients, I don't wanna to get to 13 and go back to two, all right? We're gonna keep moving forward. Now, your presentations should always be moving forward, okay? You don't wanna start presenting subjective, talking about the patient's pain, get into an exam like tenderness in the belly or a vital sign, and then go back to what the patient was complaining about nausea, all right? So you wanna get all the subjective out in the beginning, and then move through objective assessment and plan. Let's go through it. So when we get to subjective, the first thing is presenting that patient, and we wanna know the who, the when, and the what. So who's your patient? How far are they out from surgery? What surgery did they have, okay? or are they not had surgery yet, but they've been an inpatient for a number of days, okay? So that who, when, what is really important, okay? When we get into the subjective, the main thing I wanna focus on is how does the patient feel? And were they better than yesterday or worse? Third is, were there any new events overnight? And then finally, are there any new trends? So for example, with pain, is that pain getting better is it going away? Is it being managed with the medications we're giving? So for instance, Tylenol, Toradol, and Gabapentin, is that giving the patient sufficient relief so that they can ambulate and get up and walk around five times, okay? Or is the pain getting worse, all right? How about the nausea and vomiting? How about the difficulty with ambulation? Any of those trends we wanna know about. So let me give you an example of a subjective. So Jason is a seven-year-old male who is post-operative day one from a laparoscopic appendectomy for non-perforated appendicitis. Overnight, he was able to walk two laps. He tolerated chicken tenders. He has no pain, no nausea, and he wants to go home. All right, that's a good subjective presentation. Well, what are some of the things we wanna know in the objective part? of the presentation. So we wanna know the vital signs and more importantly, the trends. So as the patient tachycardic now and the tachycardia has been worsening overnight, you know, they, they started last night at three in the afternoon with a heart rate of 85 
and over the course of the night now it's 145 and they're also febrile, okay? So we wanna know that trend. Then we move on to the physical exam and this can be a focused physical exam. If the patient is post-operative from a laparoscopic appendectomy, we're gonna really be focused on the abdomen unless something changed overnight or from the previous examination. So even if you would have done a laparoscopic appendectomy and you're focused on the belly, if the patient is now short of breath and you're worried that perhaps they have a pulmonary embolus, that's gonna be an important part of the examination. So be focused when you present that physical examination. Third is the wound. So how does the wound look? Is it time to take the dressing off? That's gonna differ from surgeon to surgeon. Are there any drains in place? Okay, so if we put an abdominal drain in or is there a chest tube, what's the output? What's the character of the output? If there's a chest tube, is there a leak from the chest tube? Okay, and then of course, we wanna know what the intake and the output was, both in the amount consumed PO and the IV fluid or the TPN that was, brought, that was taken in by the patient, as well as the output. So what's their urine output? And for kids, I wanna know what that is in mils per kilo per hour. Now output's important, and output not only is urine, but for example, if you have a patient who's freshly post-op from an ostomy, we need to make sure that that ostomy has an adequate volume. I had a patient the other day after a total abdominal colectomy with an end daily ostomy who initially was putting out four liters a day from his ostomy. Now if we would have discharged him on four liters a day of ostomy output, he would have gone into renal failure, right? So you gotta know your intake and your output. As far as drains, Got to know what's in the drains and the chest tube. Also, if you have a nasogastric tube. So are you pulling out so much from a nasogastric tube that you're going to have to replace that volume? So these are things that you have to consider when you're looking at your eyes and nose. So what's an example of the objective? So I'm going back to our patient, Jason, that seven-year-old. I would say he is afebrile with reassuring vital signs. His abdomen is mildly tender and the Durbamon is intact on the wound. He tolerated 600 milliliters, including two solid meals. His urine output was 2.3 mils per kilo per hour. He had flatus, but no bowel movements. So that's a pretty solid objective presentation for this patient, Jason, who's post-op day one from a lap appy and doing well. And so for our assessment, this is a brief summary, including new events or any trends, and you wanna bring everybody's attention back. So for Jason, this is a seven-year-old male who's post-op day one from laparoscopic appendectomy. He is ambulating well, he's tolerating a diet, his pain is well controlled, and he meets discharge criteria. So another assessment could be in a scenario where it didn't go so well. So perhaps you have Jason, a seven-year-old male, is post-operative day one from a laparoscopic appendectomy for complicated appendicitis, and he was febrile overnight, okay? He is tachycardic. He had adequate urine output, but no flatus, no bowel movement. That could be an assessment. So let's get to the plan. So the plan is where you put everything together, including your action items, okay? So first is, why is the patient still in the hospital? Ask yourself that when you're formulating your plan. Two is, can any drains, tubes, or lines be removed? Can you pull that nasogastric tube if you have one? Can you pull that Foley catheter if you have one? Any of those tubes, you should be asking yourself every day, can we take this out today? All right, because especially with Foley catheters and catheter-associated urinary tract infections, the risk goes up every day that catheter's in place. You wanna ask yourself, can any medications be discontinued? Or do any medications need to be started? All right, do we need to start unfractionated heparin or Lovenox for deep venous thrombosis prophylaxis? All right, uh, but if they're on other medications, so for instance, opioids, or if they're antibiotics, can you discontinue those? Like we said, you wanna ask what prophylaxis is needed. We wanna ask, can the diet be advanced? Then kind of going to number one, why is the patient still here? Can we be discharged? What's the dispo? So if we put that all together, the plan needs to include medications and fluids, any tubes or drains, what the diet is, what our ambulation activity should be, what our follow-up is, and what the dispo is. So are they going home or are they staying or are they gonna transfer to another part of the hospital? So with Jason, our seven-year-old who had a lap appy, for an unperforated appendicitis and was doing well, I might say we will 
discontinue IV fluids and IV medications. He will continue on a regular diet. He can resume full activity. We'll plan for discharge today and follow up in four weeks. Let's take Jason, the seven-year-old who's post-op day one from a lap epi for complicated appendicitis. All right, so my plan might sound something a little bit different, something like this. We will continue IV fluids at the maintenance rate and IV antibiotics. I want to continue acetaminophen and Ketorolac or Tordol according to the ERAS protocol. If he continues with emesis, I may consider a nasogastric tube. He will remain NPO with sips of comfort due to his abdominal distension. I would like him to ambulate at least five times today and he'll continue as an inpatient on the pediatric floor. So that would be a good plan for somebody like Jason. Now, you have to take the whole patient into account, obviously, but I just wanna give you some ideas of what I would say if I was presenting a patient on rounds for each of these subsections. All right, so there you have it, presenting in patients on rounds, all right? We got subjective, objective, assessment, and plan. If you didn't check out that video on presenting a new consult to your team, definitely do that because that's where I talked about the style. I talked about you know, having confidence, talked about using notes. I talked about how long it should take. And of course, this is an integrity job, so you got to be honest, okay? Never, ever lie. If you don't know, the right answer is I don't know. If you like this video, give it a like. Definitely share it with your friends. Leave a comment below. I love it when I get to engage with you guys. Gets me pumped up, makes me want to make more videos. So as always, stay safe, study hard. I'll see you next time.